The following is a presentation from PokerStars.com. This week on The Big Game, loose cannon Andre Capella hit the wall. The champion race car driver busted on hand 89, and that's when things got interesting. Yeah, another bad winner, huh? Are you kidding me? I'm a man. I admit when I'm wrong. OK, you're right, Phil, right? Have Bill Helmuth and Donnie Stern made amends? I'm buying you a bottle of Dom Perignon. Phil, that's not necessary, man. <laughs> Find out if the truce will live or the war of words will explode again. Can't you just shut up? You are just all class, Phil. Wow. Big game. Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada, where we play the big game. Alongside Joe Stapleton, I'm Chris Rose, and there's more than $1 million on the table as some of poker's biggest stars slug it out for bragging rights and big bucks in our state-of-the-art poker room. Phil Helmuth has mixed up his style a bit, but he's still got the same old speeches. He's up 18,000. Rising poker star Eugene Kachalov won a big pot last night against Kid Poker to put himself up over 40K. Baby needs a new pair of Birkenstocks. The crunchy Perlot Friedman is down 77,000. Donnie Stern has been the benefactor of several huge pots this week. Once stuck 65K, he's up 188 grand. Jason Mercer joined us recently, taking the seat of the Busto Loose Cannon. He's still waiting to make his move. He's down a paltry 10K. And the sixth player is Daniel Negreanu, who's down nearly 60 thou. He is standing by right now with Amanda Leatherman. Daniel, that is a table full of rock stars out there. This is your last night. You have a plan? Yeah, well, my plan is to gamble up. We got the straddle on. I think the whole cables agreed to it, so I'm expecting some crazy action. I expect to be all in, to be honest with you. I want to gamble. I'm ready to play. You're a small baller. But not, I mean, yes, I am. That's tournaments. This is very different. <laughs> we got action players. They all want to bluff and four bet and five bet, so I'm going to get in there and gamble with them. Well, I hope you win chips. I know you do. <laughs> Here are the rules of the big game. Each table lasts exactly 150 hands. The action pre-flop is pot limit, then no limit after the flop. Blinds are two and four hundred with a hundred dollar ante, all of which is paid by the player on the button. And every player begins with at least a hundred grand, but can reload for up to five hundred thousand dollars. So we're all gonna straddle. But all right, they can then. If you knit up, you're just gonna get laughed at once more. <laughs> Boy, that's really. You got, there's a lot of reasons to laugh at you, but that'll be like the latest. He has four hundred million dollars, but won't straddle with everybody else because he's trying to be an angle shooter and cut an angle. The $400 million man will be the angle shooter of the show. No one's ever accused me of being an angle well, shooter. Well, if you do that, if you shoot that angle, we're going to write about it. It's going to be my new blog, <laughs> Phil Helmuth. Everybody else was straddling. Donnie with pocket kings. Speaking of straddling, cowboys. A raise to 3,000. Perlod. Bolts. Right? It's like, I don't want to play that high. Five out of the six times. Action over to Phil. Queen. Oh, boy, queen. Uh, get the bleeper ready. <laughs> 9,000. A re-raise to 9,000. Donnie's in a spot where he could make a four bet, but he doesn't want to chase Helmuth out if he's getting out of line. We know Phil's got queens, though, and he'll call just about anything. Call. See, that's already a big game. Look at that. He just put in $9,000. That's because there's a straddle on it, Phil. We're not asking for a double straddle, just the one. Both the straddle and the cooler <laughs> hand are to blame for the size of this pot. A juicy pot pre-flop, which comes out Jack-8 King. A set for Stern. All Donnie needed was for Phil to not flop a set. Phil checks. Donnie's in position, so if he bets here, it will look like a continuation bet. 11,000. Phil calls. I was going to suggest that the king might bother Phil, but it doesn't appear so. Jack of hearts on the turn as Stern fills up. Phil's now drawing dead to someone pulling the fire alarm. Helmuth checks. Phil put Donnie on a jack. Maybe the second one hitting will save him some money. Donnie's trying to figure out how to get max value. 
He bets 30,000. These guys both have their hands in their mouths, which, when unintentional, is a sign of weakness. Phil calls. In Donnie's case, it might actually be a reverse tell. Phil just called 30,000, drawing stone dead. The river. The ten of diamonds. Phil checks. I can't really tell how many that is, the, the yellows. About uh, 60. You have about 60 left? There's 100K in the pot, and Phil's only got 60K behind. It would probably look stronger if Donnie didn't put Phil all in. I'm on. There goes Donnie putting Phil all in. At this point, all Phil Helmuth has is a bluff catcher. I think he knows it. There's no way Donnie would be value betting any hand worse than a pair of queens in this spot, so Phil's either crushed or Donnie's bluffing in his eyes. Why is it just funny to watch him in anguish? I don't know. Six is the sickest stuff. I mean, just, I mean I, why, why do I even come here? I mean, it's just ridiculous. This guy probably has ace jack and just hit some miracle jack like it was nothing. Maybe he's just bluffing it all off. I mean, uh... Phil's trying very hard to convince himself he can call. See you, Daniel. He knows this could be a while. Here's my thinking, okay? Can't be shit at 35,000 when he went up the call. I think this time he's got, he's got, he's not bluffing at all. I think it doesn't look like he's bluffing to me. I think he's betting because he thinks Phil is just sick and annoyed and he's gonna call. 52. But I don't think I don't think Danny's ever bluffing here. Do you think he's bluffing? No. <laughs> Come on in. Huddle up. <laughs> for, for, for lunch. <laughs> oh, 100%. Everyone here. Phil and Donnie have had some history this week, maybe clouding Phil's judgment. No, you might be bluffing here. I don't think there's any chance he's bluffing yeah, here. Like, almost like zero chance. Close to zero. He wouldn't have even bothered betting the turn. I think, I think uh, Helmuth has ace king. You think he has ace king? He could have ace king. He thinks he has queens. He might have queens. Hey, wait, he did raise less. Actually, he has queens because he made it 9,000 before the flop. Yeah, yeah. He has queens because he only made it nine. He always raises pot. Yeah. I think he's Is that the Brad no pack over there? <laughs> boys, he might be bluffing here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> he might be bluffing here. He wants to be a hero right here for sure. Wow, I have a feeling he's bluffing. I don't know if I, if I can call it though. Oh, if he's bluffing and he calls, it'll be, he'll feel like, so the, the, he knows he'll he'll feel so like Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's supposed to have me beat, I mean. I don't think Phil has a feeling he's bluffing. I think Phil wants him to be bluffing. I just also, the way that Danny asked, the way that Danny asked how many he's got, it's so natural and so comfortable. It's like this, it's like, just see what you got. He's like, I'm all in. It's like, so, come on, give me a break. You have it for sure. Should I offer Phil insurance? <laughs> You bluffing, Donnie? Wow, I just, I just feel like you're, I feel like you're bluffing. He wants to win today. He wants to win some yeah. good money. Yeah, so true. like, this is his opportunity yeah. to make a be a hero. Yeah. Sixty-eight thousand dollars. Here we go. This is, this is, this is the call before the storm. <laughs> See it when it happens. Yeah. Want to get back? <laughs> Based on pot odds, Phil's not getting nearly the right odds for how often Donnie would be bluffing here. But I don't think this decision is about pot odds for Phil. All right, well, now that everyone's back and Phil's sure the cameras are back on him, we should get a decision soon. Last time I made a decision like this, I was wrong. I looked pretty bad. Wow. 
It's like my hand won't let me fold here. It's so weird. Once someone picks up their cards like that, they usually fold. Just queens, boys. That's all I have. Pocket queens. God, I hate to I hate to give this one up. Just hate to give it up. My read has not been perfect lately though, that's the problem. You just can't wait to flip over that queen ten or those two deuces or whatever. Phil folds. My contacts are drying out. It's unreal. I, I tried. Full, Phil. I tried That's to play. Guess. Tried to play two big pots against this kid. He snapped off top two and queens. Snapping off queens is pretty easy with kings. I guess you could call him a whippersnapper. <laughs> Completely screwed me. Donnie is now up more than 200 grand for the week. The big game is just getting going. Much more from Las Vegas coming your way after this. Welcome back to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada and our state-of-the-art poker room. We've made it through nearly 80% of the hands this week. And Joe, let's take a look at how Donnie Stern's play ranks statistically. Donnie's up over 200K. He's applying the pressure after the flop, C-betting 75% of the time. When it gets to showdown, he's winning 71% of those hands. And as you can see, he's by far the most aggressive player at the table when he chooses to get involved. And Donnie's last win still has the table talking. You know the sick thing was? Is if, if he had ace, jack, or jack, queen, it's just so sick that he yeah, got away Yeah, he, he didn't it. have that, for sure. The sick thing was that Phil was actually behind from jump. <laughs> Mercier straddles this hand. That just makes me so sick to my stomach. I mean, whether I'm right or wrong, it just makes me sick. That... I just wanted to call so badly. Well, you you made a good fool, I think. And I Phil know. will call here. Mercier checks his straddle. No one has that much discipline to not show the bluff there. <laughs> <laughs> Four, five, king. Right. Tell me checks. Jason's flop bottom pair. That's 1,200. Snap raised by Helmuth. Helmuth's clearly steaming, and there aren't a lot of hands he'd limp with a king pre-flop. Mercier calls. Jason's probably picked up on Phil's aggravation level. Wants to see another card. Ace of clubs on the turn. Helmuth bets 8,000. Phil's acting quickly again. He's picked up a gut shot, but this is a bluff. Jason knows the ace isn't likely to have affected too much, again, from Phil limping pre-flop. Mercier calls. The river. The six of hearts. Check. Phil checks. Check. Jason checks. Check, huh? Oh, oh, Phil's not going to like that. Wow. Soul read there from the young Mercier. He's good, that guy, too. What the f is going on here? The bad players just call with bottom pair. They call 9,000 more with jack 10 or whatever 6, the hell he had. They just spike a jack like it's nothing. Like two jacks. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it, Donnie. Well done. <laughs> I would be. That's fine. You made a good call. I just I just want to play another five, six hours and but see how many times you lose really with hands like that. They. Jason, I think, is an excellent player. He just I said he was a bad player. No, I'm the right bad player. Right after the hand, you go, bad players. And he's the one who made the... These bad players calling me with bottom pair. See, that's the thing. You insult him because you're losing and feel like it's I okay. I thought you hit the six. I was kind of upset. That's I why I, hit the six. I, I made a disgusting check. You were checked. Like, God, <laughs> I just lost. Put him on six, what seven. Six, eight. Locked up. <laughs> Bottom pair. Well, he's drawn dead. <laughs> Here we go. Let's try another one, kid. Phil raises to 3,200. Phil's raising his button, steaming, and Jason's got a decent hand. And calls. Stern folds. Prahlad straddled this hand. 
but is out. Once more into the breach for these two. <laughs> A little Shakespeare for everybody. We're so cultured because of you. Jack <laughs> seven, eight. Mercier checks. Helmuth checks. Five of spades on the turn. Phil's paired as five. Jason's just got ace high. 45. Helmuth fires 4,500 following a Mercier check. Jason does have a gut shot draw. But opts to fold. And Phil picks up a win. Where's the I just won speech? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Like it's nothing. God. No, this isn't a graph of Phil Helmuth's emotions. That's his profit loss roller coaster. After flying high at one point up over 60K, Phil now finds himself down over 100K from his peak. Phil's got less than 30 hands left if he wants to get back in the black. So sick. God, it's just almost like not even right. I'm so sick of this. Like, you have no equity there. I'm going to help him out. Sorry, Jason. It's just... No, don't worry. Daniel on the straddle, Phil folds, Jason's out. Stern raises to 3,000. Nice little button raise. Perlod folds. Can't wait to find out what he had. <laughs> Eugene's out. He could have eights. I don't care what he had. I'm not even gonna ask. Daniel calls. I won't ask it. I won't ask after the show either. That'll show him. King Trey eight on the flop, three spades. Daniel checks. Big miss for both. How much is that? 5,100. Stern fires 5,100. That meant 5K. Uh-oh, Daniel's not folding, so it's looking like he's got a move in the works. If Daniel raises here, it shows a lot of strength, and Donnie would have really bad reverse implied odds, AKA very likely to make a costly second best hand. Daniel raises to 13-1, and that gets a quick fold from Stern. He already won. I won already. He gave up. Five high, no good. <laughs> so Daniel wins one, but somebody at the table is losing it. Tick, 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 tick. Back after this. Welcome back to the big game where the steam has actually lifted the hat off of Phil Helmuth's head. That's a good lesson him, for him, in a way. Well, you want to teach me about holding now, Dan? No, no, I mean, that's a good lesson hand for you because you should understand yeah, why he doesn't have yeah. ace jack against you. Specifically, it's true. You should think about it and you'll understand why. Uh huh. You want to teach me about Not me. You talk to whoever you, your mind coach guru, he'll you teach you. You want to about teach it. me about holding? No, I don't want to teach you. I want you to learn on your own. <laughs> right, what have you done in holding? What have I done in holding? Nothing. <laughs> I've never claimed to be the greatest of all time. <laughs> you want a couple of bracelets, right? Not hold them, I don't think. Oh, yeah, limit hold them. You want two and limit hold them? Yeah. You want a couple WPTs and hold them? Yeah, but whatever. That was back when poker was easy, when he could win. Like, you know. I just made two WPT final tables in a row. Cool story, bro. I just made two WPT final tables in a row, Daniel. Actually, that is pretty impressive. I guess I was lucky. We've had a raise by Kachilov, a re-raise by Negranu, and now action over to Stern, who folds. And Kachilov's out, too. Oh, I saw that one. Ace of diamonds. Yeah, that one's a good one. I'm not talking about tournaments, Phil Helmuth. I'm talking about this stuff. It's very different. Don't you see that? It's, like, so different. That of course it's different. I but mean, you got to learn how to play because you're not going to you know, beat Daniel, them. You know, nice Daniel, it would be nice when I have pocket queens if they'd occasionally hold up or ace king oh, on the show. Yeah. It would be really nice because I'm playing, or when I flop top two, but I guess nice I'm just you, supposed to lose with all those hands, right? You just got to understand why he can't have ace check. That's what you got to learn first. Once you know that, then you'll be on the right I'd track. Like to, I'd like you to see the tape afterwards. What if he has ace jack? <laughs> I hope he has ace jack now. I'm going to look like the yeah. biggest idiot ever. <laughs> He's going to be like, head ace jack. <laughs> middle pair top kick, turn trips. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, gosh. Now I hope he has ace jack. I'm going to eat my words, right? Mercier raises to 3,000 with big slick. Stern folds. Friedman, pocket jacks. Typically, a player wouldn't raise jacks from early position, but in this case, Jason's in the small blind and acts in front of him after the flop. 
Also with a player like Jason, there's always the chance he's got air. Perlad with a re-raise to 10,000. They all thought you had it. Did you go over there and ask? Every yeah, one of them said you had it. No, nobody here thought he was bluffing you, but. You folded, so you obviously agreed. No, I didn't really agree. I thought, thought, I, thought <laughs> I had you. <laughs> I just didn't want to be wrong again. Jason definitely won't fold here. He'll either four bet or just call. Prahlad's been playing pretty straightforward, but Jason hasn't been here all week, so he might not know that. Mercier does four bet, raising it to 26-7. It's a pretty small raise, but it's normal for a four bet. Four bets are usually a bit smaller because since it's such a strong move in and of itself, it's not always necessary to risk as much. Unless Prahlad thinks he has some kind of sick read, I don't see him folding. Jason's got too big of a reputation for being loose. Cool. What's that? So Friedman calls. Well, after four bets, we're going to see a flop, and we've got over 50 grand already in the pot. The flop, tray six deuce. This is about as good a flop as you could ask for with two jacks. Perlod still has to worry about Jason having an overpair. Good flop for jacks, but if Jason fires big here, Perlod won't have an easy decision. If Jason wants to continue to rep a big hand, he's going to have to fire. And he leads out, betting 24,500. This bet is actually smaller than Jason's last pre-flop bet. Although with a player like Jason, he could play aces or kings the exact same way. This is what makes poker such a great game. Pallad's got a very strong hand. It's a good board for them. But because of Jason's aggression, he's still got a decision to make. He could easily let this go or we could see him ship it all in. Perlod's all in. Now at first, I really wanted you to shove. That made me feel like you had a really hard decision. And you were almost reluctant. Jason's getting three to one, the right odds if aces and kings are still live. Why don't you just jam free? I call. Mercier calls, and he's actually the one all in. Uh, do you want to run it twice? Uh, sure. Right. Two times. I think this is going to be a split pot, is my guess. Sorry. Just, you know. It's all right. It wouldn't be that bad. As long as you don't lose twice. <laughs> so they'll run it twice, seeing the turn in river cards two times, playing for half the pot each time. The turn, the five of oh, spades. Yeah. <laughs> he, gets, he might get three quarters or something <laughs> like that. The first river card, the nine of spades, so Friedman takes half the pot. Perlot's free rolling now. If he can dodge an ace, a king, or running hearts, he'll felt Jason. Kind of wish we could have ran two whole boards. The second turn is the three of spades. Jason's down to his last card. Yeah. The second river. It's an oh. ace. Wow. I knew it was going to be a job. Sick. <laughs> for Lod was so close to scooping a biggie. I was going <laughs> to ask for three times, but then I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to miss. I'm not going to miss. What in the hell is going on on this table? We'll find out, Phil, when we come back. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada, home of the big game. Stats for every hand in the big game, as well as uncensored bonus footage and clips deemed too hot for TV can be found on the website. Do you think it's harder now than it was before, 10 years ago? I think it's easier for me. What? Than 10 years ago. Poker's easier now? Because you didn't know how to play back then. Back then. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 13, played five card draw like a few times at that point. 10 years ago, Jason needed a ride to soccer practice. 
Perlod boots 10-3. I know you think, I know you think it's a lot more, I mean, yeah, obviously they've solved a lot of the math, but it's the same game it was. You still have to be able to look at someone and decide what they have. That's why you and I still get there, Daniel. No, I actually think That's it's a lot harder. That's why I have two harder. final tables in a row. I think it's a lot harder. Eugene is raised, Daniel is re-raised. Daniel knows Eugene's a pretty active player. Now on to Jason, ace eight off suit in the big blind. Daniel's made a pretty good point. The average poker player these days knows a lot more than they did 10 years ago. Jason's well above the average poker player. He four bets to 24-2. Now the straddler, Donnie Stern, folds. Well, everyone was right about Eugene. He was raising pretty light. And he's out. You got like uh, 75 left or so? They have 68 behind. Daniel looks a little suspicious, but his hand is behind to any ace. I'm going to fold. So Jason rakes in some cash as Mercier three bets Daniel off his king queen. Both Daniel and Phil are tied for first in three betting 16% of the time, almost three times more than all these young maniacs. Jason Mercier apparently picked up on that and then picked off Daniel with ace rag. All right, guys, Phil, you got into a fight with Donnie earlier this week. And you promised him a bottle of Dom, but since you're having a rough time, we decided to cover it for you. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'll stand up for this. <laughs> Here's a trophy presentation. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, you kiss it. It's yours now. I, I'm not going to kiss it. It's but, icy but, cold. Yeah, it is very cold. Thanks. It's icy so. cold. I apologize for any of my uh, All good. misbehavior. You guys want to bust it out now? I guess that's one way to make sure these guys stay entertaining. Well, Donnie should be the one saying I'm sorry for kicking everybody's butt this week. He is up nearly 215 grand. The next closest is Eugene with less than a $30,000 profit. Phil's roller coaster ride continues, losing a bit less now, and Perlot just chopped a big pot that would have brought him closer to even. In addition to getting the bottle of Dom, Donnie Stern is also on the straddle. So action on Perlot. He folds. But I mean, I'm thinking. Queen, so Eugene, queen, tray suited. Raises. Eugene's been three bad a bunch, but he doesn't seem gun shy. Daniel's out. Phil, ace seven in the small blind, calls. Phil's called with a weak ace out of position, but he's ahead of Eugene's range. Action folds over to Donnie. He's not going to tango. So two to the flop, which is nine, six, ten, two spades. Helmuth checks his gut shot. Eugene's got a flush draw. He could semi-bluff, but Phil's been raising a lot of flops lately. Kachalov checks. By checking behind, he prevents getting check raised with just queen high. Nine of spades on the turn, giving Kachalov a flush. Phil's picked up a dead spade draw. Looks like Phil's the one going to be semi-bluffing now. He bets 5,000. Eugene knows he's likely to have the best hand, even with the paired board and bigger spade possibilities. Eugene just calls. Phil's dead to the eight of spades, which would make him a straight flush. It's not the eight of spades, it's the deuce of clubs. Helmuth checks. Eugene's gonna want a value bet. Phil's only got ace high, but he's had a really hard time laying down hands tonight. Eugene sizes his right, he might get a call. He bets 12 and a half thousand. Nine, ten of clubs. Right. Looks like he's actually considering a call with this bet. Phil may be trying to convince himself that Eugene has a hand like Queen Jack or King Jack with one spade. All right. Phil calls. And Eugene shows the win. Or if you're Phil, a loss. Tick, 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 tick. Of course I can't beat the queen three. No way. I'm gonna need a little makeup over here. Somebody is perspiring. 
We're back after this. Welcome back to the big game. He's Joe Stapleton. I am Chris Rose. We have reached the final stretch this week. So Donnie and Phil are this close to sharing special memories over Dom. We'll be wheeling in a fireplace shortly. Friedman straddles. Action on Kachaloff. Ace Queen suited. Raises to 3,000. Daniel folds, fills out. Big slick for Jason Mercier. Jason could flat call or he could re-raise. He re-raises to 10,300. 6-5 for Donnie who folds. Prelade. Jack five, he's out. Jason may have raised Eugene, hoping even for a four bet in this spot. Got this Dom just sitting here. It's gonna spoil. Spoil. It's on ice at least. Calm down, Donnie. Maybe Eugene again. calls. You'll get your booze. <laughs> Big hands to the flop, which is 10-8-6. Not a good flop for Jason's hand. Any middle suited connector has connected with this board. Mercier checks. And Kachaloff checks. King of spades on the turn. Mercier's just made top pair. Eugene's picked up a gut shot. Good card for Jason because it makes his hand, but also Eugene's got to put him on a very small number of hand combinations to think the king helped him. <laughs> Mercier Come bets 14,300. Eugene's got ace queen high, but it's not the easiest fold, considering Jason would play a hand like ace jack the exact same way. Eugene folds. So Mercier rakes in a decent sized pot. A big slick nearly cost Jason some big time cash tonight. Earlier, Mercier went head to head against Prahlad Friedman in a pot worth nearly $200,000. Let's see what Jason was thinking as we go behind the poker face. I hadn't really played any big pots yet, and uh, I pick up Ace King suited. So I decide to open. I open the 3K, Donnie folds, and Prahlad takes a little bit and then makes it 10K. At this point, you know, I feel like he could have a pretty wide range, and I think that my hand is the best hand at this point. It's a pretty hard hand to play out of position if I just call. And I feel like I could get, you know, a decent amount of money in if I four bet and then he shoves, I'm obviously going to call. So uh, I make it 26.7K, planning on calling, snapping him if he jams and he tanks for a while and then calls. At this point, you know, I figure he could have a wide range of hands, you know, ranging from jacks to eights or, you know, like seven, five suit, hands like that. So when the flop comes out, two, three, six, rainbow, I really didn't feel like he would have a big pair. I really felt like he it was leaning more towards a hand that he's like three bet and then just decided to take a flop and hope to take it away. So I bet 24.5 and he tanked for a while and reluctantly shoved, which almost made me decide to fold because when he does that, you can really tell that he has a decision instead of just like that he had this plan to shove. But there was a lot in the pot at that point and uh, I was getting a decent price to call. I call. I called fairly quickly and we ran it twice and I hit it right on the river of the second board to split the pot. I think I'm fine with the way I played it. I think I may have misread what Prahlad's range was when he called the four bet. Going with the read that I had, I mean, Weasley could have just got the money in pre-flop uh, and then just flipped for it and ran two boards. But with the flop coming the way that it did and you know just how the action went and how much money I had already invested, I, I felt like I had to, to call after the flop. Ace from space on the second river, and Jason is fortunate enough to put half those biscuits back in his basket. All right, double straddle and warning. Double straddle. And a warning. <laughs> I, I will ship weak, I'm, I promise. Double straddle, I will ship weak. 
sorry, yeah. <laughs> and a warning, I will ship weak. That's what I'm talking about. Helmuth, Helmuth has, like, kicked it into high gear. Everyone at the table just widened their ranges. <laughs> Mercier first to act after the double straddle. He calls. Ace four for Donnie Stern. He's not playing. Prahlad, ace seven. Nope. Suited one gapper for Eugene Kachalov, who calls. Okay, now it's my option, right? Yeah, because Daniel called. <laughs> wow. Bill checks. <laughs> I know Mercier is gonna call. He didn't limp to fold, right? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't like to limp to fold. Everyone's dominated in some way except Eugene. Seven nine four on the flop. This is the Clark Kent of flops. Unassuming, but pretty super. Everyone's got something. Ketchelov fires 3,200 with top pair. Yeah. Daniel's got an open-ended straight draw, and his hand is disguised, but he does have the worst open-ender possible on this board. Daniel raises to 10,200. Phil's also got top pair, but he's dominated. After Eugene bet into three opponents and then Daniel raised into three opponents, Phil should have a pretty good idea that Dolly Parton is no more good here than she was in Rhinestone. <laughs> that was one of my favorites, by the way. You like that one? <laughs> Phil likes it too, apparently. I'm all in. Phil is all in. Phil has just pulled the trigger, but I think he might have been looking down the barrel at the time. Can't call with his gut shot. How much more is it? Eugene's out. Well, there's 10-2, Danny boy. Pulling the 10-2. 14. Yeah, I think I committed myself in this year. Into three people, that's better. <laughs> 20,000, 21,100. 21, one? Yeah. 21,100, correct? Right. Daniel's getting better than good odds to call. 21, one, just let me double check to see if this is right. So that's 20 and there's 20, 30 in there, yeah. Daniel's in. You got a seven or a nine? No, I got, uh, I got uh, run it twice if you want. No, once is good. All right, one time. I figured I might. I, figured, I thought Daniel was weak, and I thought I could get you off a nine. Yeah, you're right. Just one time. Gamble, huh? Yeah, Phil's ready to ready to gamble. No insurance, no nothing. He's ready to just double up or go home. <laughs> the new well, Phil Helmuth. There is a perfect card. A six is the perfect card for me. That's what I'm rooting for. Three or an eight would be much better for me, but you'd be upset with that, and we'd lose you, so that wouldn't be good. Even if they chop, someone's going to be upset. <laughs> the turn, three ball. There's a three. She's drawn dead, right? <laughs> to a tie. Did, did anyone have any doubts that you were going to get there? Phil is drawing to a chop with a six. One of the most obvious straight, <laughs> straights. The river. The jack of clubs. Sorry, buddy. Game, yeah, baby. Phil. So. Game, pro lap. Game, Phil. Game. I was playing with you. Game. So with the gracious exit of Mr. Helmuth, there are only five left. Donnie is knocking on the door of a $200,000 profit. Eugene and Jason are still smiling. Daniel and Prahlad are down, and Phil is out, but he is chilling with Amanda. You played great. I mean... Do you think you played great? Of course I played great. I got completely screwed. Good. It's like the deck is set against me. I mean, Daniel gets it all in with a baby straight draw. He puts $30,000 in there and just peels a three like it's nothing, you know? I'm sorry. That last pot had like 80000 and I mean, it would have gotten me close to even. Bill, you might have lost your buy-in, but we were all winners because we got to watch you entertain for an entire week. Back with more poker after this. Welcome back to Las Vegas, where it is last call at the big game. Hook it up. 
Cheers. There it goes. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Playing with Phil's money. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding, Phil. <laughs> that is not the right thing to say. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm screwing around. This is the last hand. Is this the time where the lights come up in the bar and you see who you've been talking to all night? <laughs> oh, I dread that time. Ace queen for Kachalov. Yeah, we're crazy. Raises to 3,000. Oh, man. Sorry, Daniel. More Henry. <laughs> Mercier folds two. Donnie, pocket sevens. Could see something here. Let's play it straight up. He calls. Prahlad's in two. Only because it's the last hand. Just like me, Prahlad's making a last ditch effort at last call. <laughs> Six, Jack, four. Stern checks, Friedman checks. Donnie's got the best hand. Eugene might think his ace queen is best. Fire 6,000. He was the pre flop aggressor. Donnie calls. I'm glad I didn't get left alone to, for the temptations. Friedman folds. Only one overcard out there for Donnie Sevens. May not be too scary. Well, now it's scary. Top pair for Kachaloff. Eugene's just caught up. Stern checks. Kachaloff checks. Eugene checks behind to try to get a river bet out of Donnie. King of clubs on the river. King is another scare card. Stern checks. Let's see what Eugene's charging for a ticket to the value show. Maybe 12,000. There's an awful lot out there that can beat Donnie. Oh, 69. You lost 6,900? Dimes. Man, would you yeah. check the turn with Ace? We have King Jack. Donnie's made a pretty good read. Also, he's got a nice profit, and it's the last hand of the night. I think he'd bet the turn if you had nothing. Donnie folds. Last hand. Come on, you can, show, it, you can mean, show on last you hand. Last hand. You can show. I folded fourth, fourth, fourth anyway. pair. Come on, show it. He doesn't. You think I get get something right, so, decent? Uh, so Eugene Kachaloff wins the final hand of the week, but Donnie Stern was the BMATGB, the big man at the big game. Wow. <laughs> and at the other end of the spectrum, we lost our loose cannon, Andre Capella, and Phil Helmuth lost a hundred dimes. An entertaining week of poker comes to a close. Thanks to the generosity of Mr. Phil Homies, we're going to enjoy the rest of our night. I'm Amanda Leatherman saying goodbye for now. And remember, if you've got the cash and the guts, there's always a seat open at the big game. See you next time. For Joe Stapleton, I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you next time. Hey, Phil. I'm sorry if you thought I was needling after the pot or anything like that. All I wanted you to just admit is that you were that you you were out of line too. That's all. Okay. Yeah. You called me stupid I mean, back. You know. I mean, I. No, you're right. It was it was it was it was immature. The preceding was a presentation from PokerStars.com.